All right, my friends, welcome to episode 294 of Prof and Dev Play Games. My name is Larry, the professor at Prof Plays Games on Twitter. Over there is Anthony, the dev at Summer Speak. Uh, how's it going, man? Going okay. It's been a bit of a busy weekend. Um, my son's birthday is on Friday, but since we're going to be gone, um, we can't do, couldn't do any kind of special thing next weekend. So this weekend was. Uh, birthday things, which wasn't really huge because we're not having a big party or anything, but still wanted to have a bit of a special time. So yeah, well, happy birthday to him. Yeah, eleven. Oh, my daughter is yeah. turning four this month, and I thought that yeah. was crazy. But eleven, eleven. I'm like two years from a teenager. Mm. I know that that's the exact sound I make when I think about <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> God, we're old, man. Yeah, a little bit. Um, so, yeah, this weekend for me has been uh, just crazy with realizing how much, how many half brothers I have, and photos of you know my grandma and my dad that I never saw. It's been a been a it's been I'm a sure. week. <laughs> um, but I can't believe that E3 is like coming up so quickly. This is our traditional E3 prediction episode where we make lots of predictions and get none of them right. Um, so we're going to keep that tradition going, I hope. Um, but we're going to start. Uh, we got a whole rundown of like oh, the E3 schedule, everything that's happening. Um, and before we began, we noticed that Weezer was playing on at the first event, the Summer Game Fest. So we just started listening to some Weezer and lost track of time. So we're here <laughs> now, but we'll spare you the, the Weezer so we don't get... I don't know, takedowns or whatever. Yeah, it's true. Um, Do you get takedowns for a podcast? No, our YouTube, when it's put on YouTube, I bet it would get claimed. Yeah, and our podcast is published on YouTube every week, so yeah. Yeah. That'd probably happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so why don't we go through this piece by piece? We have the Summer yep. Game Fest, which is Jeff Keighley's thing. Thing. Wh- whatever. Um, which he started last year, right? Mm-hmm. During 2020, it was just like, hey, we're not doing anything. Uh, None of these big conventions are happening, so let me just uh, put something together for people to show. And I think it just kind of felt like it, I mean, it runs through the entire entire summer, and he just does different things here and there. Um, But yeah, it kicks off on June 10th at 11 a.m. Pacific Time. Um, And the only other thing that we have said here is there will be announcements and updates from over 30 game publishers, such as Activision, Epic Games, PlayStation, and Xbox. Well, I already know Xbox isn't going to say anything huge here. No. Let's be honest. They have their own thing later on. Yep. But it could be some minor updates to Xbox games. Uh, I'm trying to think of, like, ancillary brands or updates that they could show at this point. It's not going to be anything huge. Um, Do they have anything to add to the Master Chief collection still? Probably. It's probably, like... I think ODST is in there, but it's probably something like that. Reach or ODST, or I think are both in there. But yeah, if, if if there's anything left that they could put in there to finish that out, um, I can't think it's going to be anything major. Uh, same with PlayStation. I have. It's not going to be anything huge at that point. the The I'm biggest a... thing I could think would be maybe uh, release date for Horizon, maybe. If this is the only thing they're doing around at this time, but based on that interview from Herman Holtz, like they don't even know if they're going to hit this year. So I yeah. seriously doubt that. Yeah. I don't think they've decided they're going to, I don't think we're going to see a release date from them at all this summer. Um, yeah. They're going to, they're going to play that one a little close. Um, yeah. I could see if it's coming out in the fall, I could see them doing a release date like in August or something, but <clears throat> yeah, they want to, I'm going to um, buck your thoughts here about Sony though. And I'm going to go buck wild and say that at this Summer Game Fest, Sony is going to announce a partnership with Konami about a Metal Gear uh, remaster, Metal Gear Solid remaster. Oh, that, that there's been rumblings about that. There has been, and I don't know if it means Kojima is involved, but with, no. with Keeley, you know, I don't know. I, I could see, I don't know, it aligns in some way for me, even though I think sure. it's totally, in, almost impossible, but I, I'm going to go out on the limb and say that. I don't think it's impossible. I don't think if uh, Konami does this, that it's exclusive to PlayStation. Mm. Because it doesn't have to be. There's already the the remake that was on the GameCube. um, Right. Which I I have. Um, 
but it could be timed for PlayStation. I mean, Kojima wouldn't be involved at all. I don't. I you think don't, there's you don't too think much he back. reprises his role with Konami? <laughs> no, not at all. I don't think they're. But that does mean say something that there uh, there could be any kind of tease from Kojima with PlayStation or anything there that might be going on in the behind the scenes. Well, it's always um, Jeff Keighley always, and Kojima, so something. it's always possible. Um, yeah. Epic, I expect we'll just get some Fortnite news. Honestly, we'll get this Fortnite update. Sure. Um, you get um, Assassin's Creed characters in Fortnite or something. Possible. They wanted everything. I mean, in that the court case, it showed that they were courting Nintendo. They yeah. wanted they wanted Samus in there. Well, that was the rumor for a while, um, and I thought that was going to happen, but uh, I guess not. Yeah, Nintendo's weird like that. I mean, just as that uh, Legend of Zelda Netflix series was actually a thing that was going to happen, and right. then it leaked that it was going to happen, and Nintendo's like, nope, fuck you. <laughs> you leaked so it. Crazy. We're out. We're not going to deal with you anymore. Film um, will always leak, you know? You're not uh, in control of it, Nintendo. That's not how Nintendo works, though. I know and Especially yeah. if you are the partner that leaks it. Yeah. That's the thing. You never hear leaks like this out of Nintendo. Nope. And so, I, I mean, I think they just hold a strict thing of if they're, whoever they deal do partnerships with, if you can't hold... uh hold the information, then they're not going to deal with you. Because right. um, they can, clearly, in their multinational, fairly large company. I know, that ship is, like, super tight. Nothing yeah. gets out of there. And anything no. that's come out, like, oh, there's going to be a what, what, fucking Star Fox Eraser from Retro or whatever, like, <laughs> no, all that shit is made up and none of it's happening. Because <laughs> yeah. they don't leak shit. Yeah, it's very rare to see any kind of leaks out of Nintendo. And really, the only time you get any kind of even potential leaks is like really close to release. Uh, yeah. Like not release uh, like the, the directs themselves. Right. Like, I don't know. So an Activision, what does Activision even do? They do Beyond call, call of duty. duty. And, I'm like, uh, here's <laughs> call of duty. <laughs> yeah. They're going to show some call of duty. Probably. We're going to get yeah, some war zone drops. Bro. Yeah. Cool. But, yeah. So yeah, the most exciting thing out of that Weezer, this Weezer, is, I'm yep. tuning in for Weezer. The rest of it is going to be uh, kind of like how it always is with like the VMAs or Keeley stuff. It's like, eh. yeah, yeah, kind it's of. It's always small stuff. It's like, oh, the new Metro. I'm like, oh, I don't. OK, great. Yeah. And he I hypes them up to shit. It's like, that's going to be the most amazing. So many new, re- you know, announcements never yep. before seen. And it's like things you've, you know, small things that are not yeah. deserving of that much hype. So, yeah, um, I don't trust his hype. <laughs> it's probably a good place to be. Um and then we hit June 11th, and you get the IGN Expo, which I have no clue what that will be. No, I don't. It says new. It says new game reveals. Yep. Never before first seen gameplay. It could be anything, honestly. And it's probably honestly not going to be that huge. <laughs> like I'll be honest. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't see it being a big stage for new announcements. Although I could see something like the caliber of like, um, uh, what's the name of the Shovel Knight company? Oh, yacht, um, yacht Club. Yacht Club, like a new thing from Yacht Club or something like that. Yeah, I mean, you could you could see stuff there. You could see the people, um, crap, who makes uh, Hollow Knight and are making Ch- the next Team thing. Cherry, who said there's Team- nothing in E3 from them. Oh, well, there you go. I mean, that would be they're they're the type of companies that would be showing up at like Summer Game Fest stuff, yep. mm-hmm. the IGN area here. But if Team Cherry exactly. has already said nope. <laughs> <laughs> There's been cool. so many pre-announcements that said we're not going to be there. Like you're yeah. gonna, not going to see Gotham Knights. You're not going to see Suicide Squad. You're not going to see Oof. you know um, uh, anything from Team Cherry. So Ugh. Silk Song, yeah. Which yeah. I just that's the game I want the most, and I, it's never clearly gonna you're going to still be waiting longer for it. I know someday I'll get it. Um, so yeah, I have no idea. Some some good indie stuff. I'm going to stick with Yacht Club games. We'll yeah. see something from them. Uh, Let me get to the crazy shit. Uh, devolver digital which is yeah. always nuts <laughs> you know they're fucking meta narrative yeah no they're just crazy they are truly just crazy in their presentations and i'm have now got to the point where i kind of just watch their presentations for their insanity not for <laughs> the games that they actually show and mm-hmm. if there's a game that piques my interest that's just extra to <laughs> the insanity that they put on stage while doing this stuff um yep. And yeah, I don't know a lot about what Devolver is publishing right now. Um, but if it's historically right, it will be pixel art focused 
games, uh, <laughs> yep. roguelikes or roguelites. Um, I mean, they have they they have very much solidified their uh, niche of the publishing pie. Yep, you know exactly where you're going to get. Uh, yeah, so quirky, a little bit weird, quirky games. Uh, it's not a bad thing. They've done a great job, it, but it's just you kind of know what you're getting. Um, you get more a Guerrilla Collective showcase that day, um, which is all going to be a lot of PC indie stuff, um, which there might be some fun stuff in there, but I don't have any good predictions on that. I haven't really kept up with what's on the horizon on the indie scape, uh, honestly. Yeah, I, I'm going to tune in because I always like being surprised, like seeing yeah. some indie game that I've never heard of that looks good. So, yeah. Um, I, I assume that's what's going to come out of there, but I, I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to name you anyone that's going to be there. Yeah. Um, the system era won't be there. We are indie, but we are not, we are not at E3. You heard it here first, folks. Yep. System era is not at E3. E3. Um, this is wholesome, a new one. Yeah. yeah. The wholesome games direct, which says it's back. I don't remember it ever being there. Um, <laughs> So that's good, but it says it's a wonderful collection of adorable and wholesome games uh, that are good for your soul, which is interesting. Yeah, just uh, the thing is, seventy-five games. Oh these yeah, are going to be just small indie indie things overall. I bet there could be some cool stuff in here though. If you're just looking for uh, uplifting games, uh, what was the one about like writing notes to other people? Oh, um, good, not good vibes. Um, I know, it, but it I'm came out. Open my Steam. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it mm -hmm. came out last year, and I think that's the type of game you're thinking of here. Um, things that just generally are supposed to like playing them is very positive experience and is meant to put you in a make you feel happiness. Oh, right. So, I I mean I'll be gone, but I'll probably look back at this at some point and see what the list of games were um, and keep an eye out. <laughs> I'm rapidly looking through my Steam, and I'm not finding it. it. <laughs> Boo. Um, then I think we move on to the first big publisher thing, which is the Ubisoft Forward. Yeah, that's on Sunday, I believe. Yep. Well, isn't Xbox on Sunday as well? They, they are in the evening, maybe. They are on the 13th, not the 12th. Oh. They're in the morning, 10 a.m. on the 13th. So oh, okay. finishing out the 12th, you have the Ubisoft Forward at noon Pacific. And then Gearbox, which doesn't actually have a time. Oh, wait. Kind uh, words. Kind words. <laughs> kind words, yes. There you go. There you go. found it. Oh, what the hell does Ubisoft announce? They're not going to announce well, a new I, Assassin's Creed at this point. I, I, I kind of doubt they're going to announce a new Assassin's Creed, but I do have a couple of, uh, of predictions. Um, they're going to announce a Mario and Rabbids 2, or I'm going to fucking break something. <laughs> <laughs> I just found, after having lost it for two years, my Switch cart for that game, the original one. Um, and I'm very excited about that, so I can finish my Donkey Kong DLC. Nice. Um, just too good of a game to not continue the fucking series. It's and true. I don't know if that's something that gets announced here or Nintendo, but usually it's here. Or it was the first yeah. time. Because uh, it was an Ubisoft game. It wasn't. Yeah, right. It wasn't a, like, Nintendo-developed game. So, right. uh, I, if it's going to happen, it's happening here. Um I kind of feel like that ship has sailed at this point, and it's not I happening. Know. But it's been four years, man. Yeah, um, I do think Why? we'll see more Far Cry Six. Um, yeah. yeah, what it says here in the little thing reading, I do think there'll be if any Assassin's Creed stuff. It's Valhalla DLC roadmap. Uh, I've given up on Beyond Good and Evil Two. Like, wasn't that the guy who was in Ancel? Isn't he gone? Maybe. Anyways, for some sexual harassment thing or something? Probably. I mean, if it's Ubisoft and they're gone, we know why they're gone. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I I can see them. I'm just. I got a couple crazy predictions. Um, obviously, Rabbids too, but uh, Assassin's Creed free to play spinoff of some sort. Um, and then I'm gonna go with an AC Black Flag remaster. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, you're not wrong. They, I could see them mining some of that older stuff for some uh -huh. remasters. Um, Black Flag being probably the next one because they did the Ezio trilogy. They did Ezio and they did three. Yeah, so why not? Or, yeah, easy really money. Master. Yeah, exactly. So I, I could see them doing Black Flag now, even though it came out at the beginning of the last generation. Like it's been, yeah. you know, long enough, almost 10 years. So, yeah. 
I had a look at my three predictions for Ubisoft. The last time there was a book, the Beyond Good and Evil 2, like, it was a cinematic trailer from 2017. Yeah, it was so long ago. They have not shown or talked about it since then. It's totally dead. (laughs) It's dead. It's being reworked. Who knows? But yes. Um, I could see potentially them showing off something more for the division, potentially. Um, yeah, if they have division, more DLC or maybe a more, Division yeah, 3. Yeah, either Division 3 or uh, another expansion for Division 2. Um, mm-hmm. Thinking of anything else that they really have going Skull on Skull and Bones is not going to be there. That's the prediction I no, have. No, <laughs> I think that's done. Yeah, me too. Um, But I think they're going to headline it most likely with Far Cry 6 stuff, since that will be out theoretically this year, I think. No, they already. They put, I think they put a date. I thought it was October. Yeah, there we go. So I feel like they'll focus on that more because they recently showed something on it. So I, I kind of feel like that's all they have going into this end of this year. <laughs> so, right. um, potentially some uh, Watch Dogs Legion DLC, maybe. Although I wonder I, about that because typically they would, right? But yeah, I don't know if that did very well for them. I don't think so, unfortunately. I don't Uh, either. So, I don't have a lot of hope for this in here. I don't either. You gave me excitement with the rabbits thing, but I can't bring myself to actually believe that that could happen. So, oh my god, if they did rabbits too, I don't care. You can just stop it at that point. Yeah, these two minutes were all that I needed. Um, But I just, I think because they have so many Ubisoft forwards now throughout the year that they could not have stuff here and then present their other stuff in four months on their own anyway so yeah i'm not holding out holding my breath about anything too cool for this one um and they've kind of been floundering lately to be honest i didn't both you and i didn't really get into valhalla at all after just adoring odyssey so nope and i don't i think we at least have another year before another assassin's creed so oh yeah at minimum if not longer depending on if covid wrecked their schedule too much right um yeah so I, yeah, I think Ubisoft's just going to be in a little bit of a rough spot for a bit. Um, mm-hmm. And then we get to Gearbox is going to do their own thing. Um, and they are have not confirmed what they're showing. My thought is, is and this has been rumored, that there's a, a Borderlands project on the side happening. Um, and they say it's Tiny Tina here. I don't know if that's true. I just think they're they're working on some Borderlands thing like they always do. Um mm-hmm but they're going to show the movie something of the movie here. Oh, right. That's true. Cause they that movie a... has so many goddamn stars in it. Like yeah. ridiculous star power signed on for that movie. And I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. That's the same thing that I, I, when I saw that picture that came out a while ago, um, I forgot who it was. Kate Winslet, not Kate Winslet. Kate Winslet. No. Uh, she, Kate Blanchett. That's it. Thank you. So and there's like, borderlands. Really? So let's go through the, this cat. We, I mean, the big star names are Kate Blanchett as Lilith, Jamie Lee Curtis as Tannis, um, Kevin Hart as Roland, Jack Black as Claptrap. What um, the fuck? Yeah, I mean, these are just insane. I don't even know some of these other actors here. Um, I don't know. It's just a lot of actors, and this is all like people from the first. The first Borderlands, so it's, I assume it's taking place in that uh, time frame. Gina Gershon as as Moxie. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. I don't either. I don't know most of these characters. I know Tiny Tina. I know well. Matt uh, Moxie is the the bar owner, Mad Moxie. Mm. Um, I know that one. I just don't know the actress who's who's doing this. It's just it's kind of ridiculous the people that they have for this movie. And at this point, I feel like this E3 might be a good place to at least put a little, like, here's, here's the, like, even if it's just a picture of the cast in, in costume, like be in there. I don't know if it started filming yet. So, um, yeah, it'd be a good time to do it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I don't know. It's absolutely insane. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, this little article mentions they have Godfall, which they've been publishing. Um, oh, right. That wasn't uh, super well received. No, it wasn't. Um, and they are 
publishing Homeworld 3. Huh. Um, which I'm super excited for. Because the really? Homeworld. Okay. Homeworld games are amazing. Um, if you like RTS. Um, and really cool space RTS. Um, I must be thinking of a different game. I thought that was, um, wow, what was I thinking of? Wow, that was announced back in 2019. Jesus. Homeworld 3? Yeah. Yeah. It's been in development for a while. Um, right. Legendary Space Faring RTS. Yep. Yep. And Homeworlds 1 and 2 were really cool. Um, and then it's being done by Blackbird Interactive, which is a bunch of people who had left Relic who did Homeworlds 1 and 2. Um, hmm. And there was all sorts of uh, IP ownership problems and the whole thing. And uh, Blackbird Interactive formed and they made uh, Deserts of Karak, which was a prequel to Homeworld. Like, oh, I'm thinking of Homefront. Like, yeah, different game, <laughs> different like, game. Yeah, it's like, what? You Very different. No, that's not right. <laughs> so I'm excited to see the continuation of that story. Because um, it's been a long time. I think it was probably... I think Homeworld 2 was probably... 2001 2002 was oh my in college. god that's forever yeah i was in college whenever it came out um had a lot of fun playing that one so that's my hope my actual excitement out of that would be if they actually show a trailer for homeworld 3 or give a date potentially even of a year going like next year or whatever um that'd make me happy but then i think we hit june 13th where we actually get some big conferences um yeah, that's where we take off yeah, and so at 10 a.m. on June 13th Pacific, you get Xbox and Bethesda Games Showcase. And my only predictions here is they're going to show Halo Infinite, and Bethesda is going to show Starfield. I've got three things. I've got they're going to show a new Banjo Kazooie platformer. They're going to say the words Game Pass exclusive in relation to Starfield, and it'll be dated 2022. Yeah. So I don't know if they're going to say Xbox exclusive, but they're going to emphasize game that pass. it's Game Pass game exclusive. Pass exclusive. Yes. And then my out out in a fucking limb, Xbox plus Sega partnership. <laughs> mm, maybe. I mean, yeah, uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think it's Sega will super choose. Super far-fetched. Because <laughs> I, uh, while Microsoft mm-hmm. is throwing around money, I don't think they're throwing around that kind of money. Um, well, that's why I don't think they're going to buy them. I think there'll be some yeah. sort of partnership. Yeah. Um, I do um, think Starfield, will, they'll call it Game Pass exclusive. Like, that's yeah. pretty confirmed that Starfield is not coming to PlayStation. So, it will well, be playable if, on... If Sony wants to have Game Pass, then they could have Starfield. Kind of I guess so. Um, <laughs> but yes, it will be It will be uh, not there. And I guess that, that w- with what you're saying, you, you do not buy Starfield. You just do a Game Pass subscription if you want to play oh, yeah. Starfield. Mm-hmm. I mean, I already have Game Pass for like the next two years anyway, so. Yeah. Um, That'd be an interesting little... take of just being like, yeah, to play this game, you just subscribe to Game Pass. Yep. You don't mm-hmm. actually ever buy or own the game. Yep. Yeah, I can see that for sure, because I would drive Game Pass subscriptions through the goddamn roof. Yeah. Man, that'd so. be, I mean, they're going to do that at some point. Um, yep. Go big for it. Uh, uh, Starfield for 2022, I don't think so. You don't think so? I think that's too early. Yeah, honestly, for Bethesda, like even though yeah. this has been in development forever, here's my here's my prediction on that release date. They'll say it's for 2022, but it will come out in 2023. <laughs> I would like to just point out that I I think you're right, but because <laughs> I said they're going to announce date of 2022, <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. <laughs> but I, yeah, I don't believe that either. I think they're gonna they they hope to have it out by fall 2022. Yeah, exactly. But if it's anything like other every other Bethesda game, it's going to get delayed at least six months. Um, uh, predict that Halo Infinite is going to look a hell of a lot better um, visually. Oh God, it's, it has to, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, like they just can't. They cannot show again, and they have to. And if it does, then it's just like, well, that's a failure. Um, and they'll get. I don't think they've given a specific date for it yet. So I, my prediction is they, they have will not. Give, they will give an actual release date for it. Um, you think they will? They will at this point because okay. it's coming yeah. this year. It will come this year. Like come hell or high water, that game's coming out this year. If if I wanted some easy points, I would probably say they're delaying this game. <laughs> really? <laughs> and they'll announce that. <laughs> but again, I, I don't think delaying they're again. It. Yeah, they can't get it wrong, man. And after I know everyone keeps bringing up Cyberpunk as the canary in the coal <sighs> mine, but um, they just can't release a game that's not working. It's true. Um, but uh 
I'm trying to think of other Bethesda stuff. Uh, Elder Scrolls Six won't be there. Um, no, not, I can't see that there at all. I mean, they did the title card years ago, and I still think they're just like, nope, <laughs> like, don't even ask. Uh, we'll talk about that more after Starfield. Um, yep. Oh, the only other... Here's my prediction as the Bethesda one last thing. One more thing. Uh, Fallout 5. Dang, dude, that would be crazy. Just the title card. Yeah. That's like a lot of title cards going. Yeah. Starfield, Elder Scrolls, and... Uh, I don't think um, that... I, yeah, that's the thing is I don't think they'll do anything Elder Scrolls. That was just a few years ago. They just did the title card. So it's a similar no, no, to no. that. I, I, I meant like uh, like all going at the same time like yeah you know a couple of years ago here's this here's the elder scroll six title card here's the fall five title card here's the starfield title card we got title cards for all these but nothing coming out yeah <laughs> um, i could i wonder what you think about a fallout 3 remaster uh, it could happen at this point um it's been long enough and not enough people probably even remember it or have played it so what about what about a dual pack like that plus new vegas i doubt it yeah but Obsidian's it could be in-house man <laughs> That is true. They are now in house. Um, I guess that's the thing. This is Xbox and Bethesda game showcase. Will Obsidian be here at all? Oh yeah, on, for sure. On the I, Xbox I side of things, Outer Worlds two. Really? I do. I really think you're gonna have Outer Worlds two on in coming out uh, here, which is why I don't know if. Yeah, I don't know. It kind of seems like that would be. I don't know anything about Starfield, but it seems like in the same vein, right? Like a, a it RPG. Does in space kind of thing well, what did they announce the last year uh, obsidian yeah or avowed oh avowed mm-hmm. i think we see more of avowed yeah that's true which is set in the pillars of eternity universe it's pillars of eternity obsidian yeah what am i thinking of then what's th- huh weird okay i guess i hadn't realized that yep um so I think they show avowed more. Yeah, I think that actually, now that you say it out loud, that makes more sense to not even have something to, to compare to Starfield. I do think doing something for Game Pass that is like Fallout 3 and New Vegas versions would be really good in the future. Yeah, dude. That'd be fun. Yeah. Fallout, I never played Vegas, but Fallout 3 is great. Yeah, so I think that's going to be the first like banger. I don't, I'm not. Yeah. I don't really think Ubisoft is going to be very exciting. No. Um, but af- after Xbox, we've got Square Enix. Same day, just a few hours later. Yeah. Uh, we got to see Final Fantasy 16, right? I think we'll see another trailer for it. Um, yeah. But I still think they'll be playing pretty loose on release dates or anything with it. Just oh, like, yeah. yep, it's in development. We're working on it. Um, I think the earliest we see that is 2023, honestly. Even like a dev diary kind of thing. Like, yeah. here's here's us at a workstation drawing. Yeah, here's something. us here's us making some things. Look at how pretty this looks. Um, <laughs> We're sculpting some digital clay. Check us out. Um, I'm trying to think of. I mean, they have it here. We'll see more of the Life is Strange True Colors thing. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think we'll see much to Marvel's Avengers. I think they're gonna <laughs> let that one just kind of go away. Um, no, that that fucking thing did not go um, very well. I think we're going to, my prediction is we'll see at least one HD 2D remake of an old pixel game. Final Fantasy 6. 6. Um, Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger. Honestly, it could be a bunch. It could be any of the, the pixel Final Fantasies. Um, yeah. Honestly, they, they could decide to to go back and start early with it. Not like one, but... Um, I guess it would be weird to start with six if you did want to do the other ones. But yeah, but six is a well-known one. So yeah, I, I just think we're going to see at least see one something like that. Um, mm-hmm. They're doing it with Dragon Quest. Why aren't why wouldn't they be doing it with a Final Fantasy at the same time? Yeah, exactly. um, that Dragon Quest thing looks good. Yes, it does. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, said Final Fantasy sixteen. That was my other prediction. Um, I have no like it mentions here. I have no clue what. Uh, Eidos, Eidos, uh, Eidos Montreal is working on. Um, not another Deus Ex, I'm sure. Um, I can't even predict. They they could be doing pretty much anything at this point. Um, they're not working on in this, any of the Japanese properties, so... I don't know, maybe another Marvel thing? I don't know. There's a rumor about Guardians of the Galaxy. That's weird. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. After yeah. Marvel's Avengers, kind of just I don't know how you could fuck up that IP. <laughs> you know, like have a game that like is just not that exciting. Yeah, I mean, screw it up by trying to make a live yeah, services it. game. Like, yeah, exactly. See how hard it takes Bungie to keep Destiny on on rails. Um, right. And I guess if you ask their fan base, it's never been on rails and work. So yet they still play. <laughs> oh man, that game has such negative fan base, but they still play it every day. <laughs> My God, I know they're you know addicted to it. Yeah, no, I mean it definitely fits in that regard, but it just amuses me. Anytime Bungie does anything whatsoever to that game, any kind of update, anything, it's like the entire world is crumbling. <laughs> <laughs> um it's really amusing to me that that subreddit is just on fire every time uh, yep um <laughs> um what's that fucking um project athia what does that get renamed oh yeah i know what you're talking about um soul breaker no that's not yeah it. Um, some weird thing i'm gonna have to fucking google this i think project it, uh, athia will be there yes um for spoken for spoken yep project athia become for spoken, for spoken. Okay, yeah, that's that's a terrible name. <laughs> it looked really cool. Um, it does, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I bet we'll see something more of that. Um, they won't show anything for Final Fantasy XIV in here. They already did their big uh, fan fest on all those trailers and reveals, and they tend to not put the MMO stuff in their E3 presentations. So 16, um, HD2D remake... Um, Project Triangle. Oh yeah, yeah. Whatever that the fuck thing. It's called. Maybe we'll have it, an man. actual title. Um, oh my god. <laughs> Project Project Triangle Strategy. Um, Thank you. Yeah, it could have an actual name at this point. Um, right. Yeah, I think that's it. I honestly think a lot of this will be taken up by whatever Idos Montreal is working on, mm-hmm. and then um, probably a Final Fantasy sixteen thing. Yep. I would hope. Like, uh, if this is your big showcase for the year, I would expect that you'd want to do that. Um, the only thing where I would say this may not be true is they may focus on their Western dev stuff here. Mm-hmm. And then Tokyo Game Showtime do their Japanese stuff, which Square has done before. They balanced it that way before. So maybe uh, tamper expectations a little bit. Um, I just every time I get my hopes up about uh, Square Enix presentations, they just absolutely suck. So I'm just yeah. I'm going in there thinking it's Quiet Man Two, and that's all we're <laughs> that's all we're getting. There you go. That's what we're getting. So any, anything better than that is just like cool. All right. So uh, yeah. the next thing is um, something that I don't understand: the Future Games Show, which I feel like every presentation is about future games. So I'm really confused about what this is. I mean, I'll watch it only because it's being hosted by Laura Bailey and Troy Baker. Yes, true. But I have a feeling that, again, this will be focused a lot on uh, PC, indie type stuff, mid, mid-tier, double-A uh, games. Again, stuff I, I just don't have a good idea of what, what that might be. Mm-hmm. But I think it rolls into a lot of the stuff of the next one, which is the PC gaming show. Which could just be a ton of different stuff, on on honestly. Um which is a lot of indies that eventually like blow blow up in a lot of ways. Yeah, so, Valheim like, was Valheim was in there. I remember that. Like, that's where they showed Borderlands three and XCOM two and Warframe usually is in there. Baldur's Gate three, just uh, a mishmash of PC focused games. Um, I, I it might be later. Um, I think there's a Steam focused event later, right? Um, I thought it was like after all this stuff was done after EA play or whatever else. Um, Yeah. But I'm just going to, I've heard a rumor and I just want this rumor to be true so badly that I'm going to make this prediction because I just want to like will it into existence of a steam handheld gaming machine. Uh, I mean, we've seen the rumors. I, I, I'm just expecting disappointment out of that. Honestly, I've read that it's not real or if they did it, it would just be disappointing. Disappointing. The second, yeah. the latter. Okay. Like, yeah. they, Steam boxes were pretty shit overall. Mm-hmm. Um, and this isn't going to be any better because it's going to run Steam OS, which is Linux. So it yeah. can only run games that will run on Linux. 
and specifically to the Steam box. And the hardware is not going to be that powerful. Like, it's going to be some form of uh, either APU, like Ryzen APU type thing, or it's going to be some NVIDIA Tegra yeah. thing. Like, it, it's just not going to be the same of like, cool, I have my PC library and handheld. It's like, not at all. Um, so what you're telling me is that basically my Switch is my Steam handheld <laughs> for all the indie of, games. <laughs> kind of. Um, and then there was, was it the NVIDIA Shield? Oh, yeah, right. Where you could, I think you could stream games to the NVIDIA Shield from your PC. Um, mm-hmm. That That's what the Steam handheld would be, is if you want to play like your, your big, beautiful games, you're going to play it on your whatever main pc you have and just stream the video to right your handheld mm-hmm. where you're sitting somewhere else in your house because latency over the internet's gonna suck um so i don't know i i'm just prepared to be disappointed by it overall and just on the matter of the hardware that steam has and valve have just abandoned over the years uh here's looking at you with steam controllers <laughs> oh god uh, right um i think the only thing that's done decent for them has been the vr stuff um, index now and then I mean they worked with HTC for the the original Vive so I don't know I mean Steam boxes haven't been great controller they abandoned yep so yeah I, I don't Hardware. have a like I'm I mean, just like so. Gabe Newell's gonna get excited about something else and it's just gonna or anyone there's gonna get excited about something else and wander away <laughs> and not yeah. do anything because that's how yeah, that makes com- sense. company right. works they're basically making money off of Steam so the rest of it it's not really captivating for them. No, not at all. Yeah, I can see that. So after that, is this still the 13th? Man, 13th. Then we get Warner Brothers, which you killed all my stuff on. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah, we'll see Gotham Knights and Suicide. Nope. nope. Okay. Nope. I don't what. I don't know what the hell Warner Brothers is going to show anymore. I mean. Right. They came out and said, we're not going to show these things. Like, okay, then the you're f- going to show what Injustice 3? Um, There's like a small rumor about injustice versus Mar- like dc versus marvel fighting game um which i can't see happening but if they that was true done by nether realm that'd be fucking incredible yeah i mean they have a a chunk of ips that they haven't worked on because they've bought a lot of companies especially a lot of companies up in the seattle area like they own monolith um which did all the fear games they did the middle earth shadow of mordor shadow of war like, are they going to do another Middle Earth game? Do they even have that license anymore? I have no clue. I um, think they do. Um, and I'd like to say that I would hope they would, but you know what? I've had Shadow of War for about four years and haven't even started it, yeah. <laughs> even though I loved Mordor. But I think I think we mentioned in a previous podcast, I loved Mordor so, so much in 2014 because there yeah. wasn't a lot of other things. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. Um, they have fear. They have... Um, I don't think they own the IP, but they have like no one lives forever from a long time ago. Um, yeah, I, I want to say there'd be something coming out of there, but maybe another Middle Earth. Like Monolith still exists. Um, I know an ex Pocket person that, that works there. So, yeah. right, they're they're still a company that is still has a number of devs employed, and they're making something for Warner Brothers that isn't Injustice or anything. They don't make those type of games. They make. Right. Uh, third party, third person adventure games or F- FPSs. Like, right. um, who was making Gotham Knights? Uh, uh, Montreal. Montreal. Okay. Have they talked about what Avalanche is making? Uh, aren't they making Hogwarts? Are they the ones doing? Yeah, they are the ones doing Hogwarts. Okay. Yeah. Which I don't know if they said they weren't having Hogwarts, although. It's hard to say. Like I just I'm looking at I'm like I have no clue what they would be announcing at this point if they've now said no none of these other games um Lego games oh that's Lego. true that, that there could be some probably Lego Skywalker saga oh yeah because it finally um, will come out they actually might put a release date on it <laughs> yeah exactly they'll put a release date on that maybe there's some other Lego game that we're not thinking of that uh, it's um, true there could be some Lego more Lego DC stuff or Lego Marvel stuff. Oh. Lego Game of Thrones, those oh, yeah. properties do not go together at all, actually, now that I think of it. <laughs> Why <laughs> but, not? Oh my god, Let's that's do it. amazing. 
Oh. I would be done. E three would be done. I don't need anything else. Nintendo. I just want that. <laughs> That's not. Yeah, but I if they're not doing Suicide Squad or Gotham Knights, I don't think they have a huge, exciting, um, slate going on there. Oh, this yeah, article mentions expect it's... Back for Blood, which is the yep. Turtle Rock Left for Dead. They can't beat. They don't do Left for Dead anymore, so they'll do it themselves yep. again. Yep, that'll be the big thing there for sure. And then I, I, just, I, Injustice. It's got to be. Yeah. Other than and that, you're at Lego, know. Lego Skywalker, probably. Yep. Wow. I think of all of the ones, we probably got this one the most right. <laughs> yeah. Um, unless they've got some sort of Harley Quinn, um, Poison Ivy like a uh, graph or not graphic novel, a visual novel game. Yeah. <laughs> kind of cool, actually. <laughs> some weird shit. Uh, next, the next day is Capcom. Um, God, I don't know what it's like. Street Fighter Six. Yeah, it could be. Um, Resident Evil news. Um, maybe some Village DLC potentially. Yeah, that's true. Um, some maybe some remasters of older ones that we haven't gotten in a while. Um, the four Resident four, Evil four maybe four. That seems to be next in the cadence. Um, trying to think of anything else. Some Mega Man stuff maybe. Some oh my god! Show on my That'd list, be... like yes. I'm looking at, thinking of properties that they own. Like they could do some cool stuff with Mega Man now. Um, Remastering they... Mega Man Soccer. <laughs> there you go. Um, but other than that, I I don't know. I feel like we're in a weird spot with Capcom waiting right now. Like they just came out with Resident Evil Village. They haven't announced anything new Street Fighter in a while. Kind of can't believe they haven't done anything new with Mega Man in quite a while. Um, they just announced the new Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney oh, thing. Oh, that's right. Yep. But I don't think that holds an E3 presentation. They could be no. mentioned in there, but... Uh, no, I think it would be... I think you're right. Resident Evil 4 might be the, the main thing. Yeah. Um, Street Fighter 6, one of those two. Yeah. Um, Marvel versus Street... Capcom? No. <laughs> Go, that'd be great, but probably not. I'm pretty sure yeah. Marvel is like no fucking way anymore. Um, that last one didn't go very well, so... Yeah. Um, oh wait, they might show some Monster Hunter Rise stuff, like the. Oh yeah, that's true. It's possible. I just don't know if they're. I'm trying to think if they're at the point where they would show the expansion for it. I don't think they are. It's too soon. Yeah. So maybe some DLC or like events or DLC that they're gonna put out for it, but uh, it wouldn't be like Iceborne level. I think that would wait until next year, probably. Yeah. Maybe maybe Monster Hunter Stories, too. Uh, yeah, you'll get some of that, probably. Because that's going to be out soon. So, Right. Yeah. Um, Take Two has one after that, which... I don't know. <laughs> Not GT- Nothing about. with GTA. I mean, there won't be GTA 6, let's be honest. Um, they're still making too much money on GTA 5. <laughs> Did you hear about that? I, I'm seeing here that Firaxis is under Take Two. Yes, they um, are. Did you hear that rumor about XCOM Marvel? Uh, yeah, that's what uh, the rumor of the Guardians thing was. was, oh, it, was a, okay. it was a turn-based tactics game. Mm, mm. But that's why I'm like, I don't know. That seems like a hard sell, I'll be honest. Um, yeah. But I do, like this thing mentions here, and it is true and was on my list, is that Take-Two has formed a studio around to make Bioshock 4. Right. And I think now's the time to show that um mm-hmm. uh for axis we could see an uh potentially an xcom 3 maybe it's been long enough yeah yeah because we had chimera squad in the middle yeah and that was just kind of an experiment it wasn't even a drastically yeah. different one when did civ 6 come out civ 6 was 2016 so there could be another civ as mm-hmm. well announced at this point. That's Fraxis either working on an XCOM game or they're working on Civ. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they do. Um and that's right, Take Two owns private division as well. So and they're the ones who did uh Outer Worlds. So maybe that gets announced here? Who knows? Outer Wilds? Outer Worlds. Oh that's right. They did. Yeah, but that's that's fully in Microsoft now. Well Obsidian making it that's true. And private division public, I don't even know. They, they published it and Microsoft they published said, it. Microsoft said recently they own the IP. They own the IP. Okay. So obsidian kept ownership of the IP. Um, exactly. but yeah, I'm sure private division has a couple other things to put out. 
Um, but I don't think you're going to see anything in GTA six or anything no, soon. No, I, um, maybe GTA five, whatever the PS five version. Um, yeah, they'll show some GTA five online stuff coming. Uh, won't be anything with red dead. No, that two didn't did two not did, set the world on fire. That's for sure. No, it did well, but I don't think it did as well as they wanted it to, especially whenever I'm pretty sure take two is comparing that game to, well, look at how well GTA five is doing. <laughs> Still. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, look, you know, it's the same thing with the uh, Activision Blizzard. Like, look how well Call of Duty's doing. Why isn't everything else yeah. doing that well? <laughs> like, that kind of kills everything else. Yeah, it kind of like. does. It sucks. Um, but then, yeah, so the next day is probably most exciting for me is... Oh, my God. Yeah. 9 a.m. June 15th, Pacific, Nintendo, E3 Showcase. And it this is, better be Breath of the Wild 2. This is all my eggplant emoji right here. Yeah. I, this is all I want. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be Breath of the Wild 2 as, like, a major part of this, right? I'm going to say no. <laughs> really? They're just not going to still show nothing of this? I'm going to say no. I, uh, my, I'm i going to keep my hopes super low. <laughs> and Okay, uh, if somewhere this week before E3 they announce a Switch Pro, then I could see it. I, uh, I just feel like because it's the year of Zelda, the 35th anniversary, they're going to say nothing. <laughs> but that's Breath true. Breath of the Wild 2. Um, um they always whenever i get my expectations up they yeah. crush them um, um i hope so i hope i'm i god damn hope i'm wrong but if they do do you think it's this year if a switch pro was this year then yes oh yeah i agree absolutely and this is my thing if switch pro doesn't get announced early it's either here or it's not happening well they said the switch you know there's no hardware at this event so if it's not mm-hmm. this week, if we don't hear a Switch Pro this week, then it's not. I don't think uh, that I'm questioning if that's even happening. If people are just getting spun up about nothing at that point. I, um, I mean, we've been spun up on it for, what, two years now? So yeah. I, I could totally see it being absolutely nothing. Yeah. Um, I want to say we get some Metroid Prime 4. Something. Anything. <laughs> my my prediction related to that is we get retro-related item. Either yeah. a 3D Metroid or a 2D Donkey 2D Kong. Met- I don't know what, okay. <laughs> but something but that something. is related to Metro or uh, yes. Retro. Retro, yeah, yeah. Um, do you think we get more Splatoon three? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, I definitely do. Um, um, that's 2022 game, so I can see that for sure. And then I think my my big prediction for E3 uh, for Nintendo is Mario Kart nine. Be a good one. It would be, I mean, that's just their fucking cash cow. Like, I think maybe yeah. Animal Crossing is close to overtaking Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but yeah. Mario Kart 9 would sell like fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. 8's been out for long enough. It could be time. Um, yeah, you said Donkey Kong. I don't think there's another Mario thing coming anytime in the next year, probably. Nothing no, I don't ma- think so. Nothing either. major. There could be some minor stuff here and there, but. Um, I think we're on a kind of a down like uh, dip of the waves at the moment on that. So because they did so much with it over the last few years. Um, I don't think we get any Fire Emblem things going on. No. Mm-mm. Even though I wish we would, but we're not going to. Yeah. Um, no. um, I'm, I'm going to keep saying it until it happens. But Smash character reveal Tetraminos. There you go. It's like the it's like the one video game property that's not really in this. It's true. Game and they can figure out how to make Tetris oh, yeah. into a fucking uh, character somehow. I guess that is a prediction. There's going to be another Smash character reveal in here somewhere, and it's going to be oh, yeah. the s- biggest fucking fake out ever. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's got to happen, right? <laughs> Every oh, yeah. time. Every time. Mm-hmm. Any any thoughts on who would be? At this point, no. Another sword user of some oh, random God, damn it. <laughs> anime game. Yeah, totally. Um, as you said, it should be Tetraminos. Why not? Like they seem to have everybody else in there already. Um, I can't think of a, a another classic game that's not represented. Yeah. At this point, I'm yeah. not even sure if they're a um, assist or anything. Yeah, um, no, that'd be so. Or unless you know what would be fucking crazy would be nuts um if they put sakurai himself in there <laughs> that'd be hilarious that would be so good i mean there's rumors that he's retiring yeah i saw that yeah and so i mean that'd be a great way 
you're retiring. Here you go. You get to be a character in your game. Your magnum opus. opus. Um, I just don't don't think any of that. Anything else there? Um, yeah, I think the the Pokemon stuff was probably in there. At least something for Arceus, since that's gonna be. I think they announced that for January, which is the like Breath of the Wild Pokemon thing. Mm-hmm. I think they'll they'll want to show that because both Pokemon makes a bunch a shit ton of money for them. So oh, yeah. But again, it's not completely there, so it'd probably only be a trailer, and they'll move on. Um, mm-hmm. There's gonna be I, some. There'll be some game that like we're not we're not even thinking about. Oh, uh, we're not even thinking sometimes. about. It's gonna be like We Fit Two, not We oh, Fit. Good um, Christ. <laughs> uh, Ring Fit. What? Ring Fit. Yeah. It's gonna be like Ring Fit Two. I could see them doing something else with that hardware. Like if you have this hardware, here's another thing. Two ring. Two rings. Two fit. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> um, hopefully, it'll be like a kid size one because my daughter loves playing that game. So we yeah. play it together a lot. Um, I, Wind Waker HD, like this. If it's fucking thirty fifth anniversary of Zelda, they got to have some fucking Zelda thing here, right? No, no, they're giving us Skyward Sword. So why would they give us anything else? Oh my God, dude, that would be the lamest fucking thirty fifth anniversary. Yeah, I really want Wind Waker HD, but I'm not holding my breath. Oh my God. I would love to, to announce a, a slew of Zelda a port to virtual console stuff for yep. Switch in this back half of the year. And they might, but again, not holding my breath. No, I'm not holding my breath of the wild, too. Yeah. Uh, wow, that's a bad joke. Oh, um, boy. I laughed inside and then I died. Um, yeah, what? Like Twilight Princess put it on Switch? Uh uh wind waker put it on switch what fucking poured up fucking ocarina and uh majora's mask majora's mask yeah i don't yeah. know it's just like you've got to do something for this fucking anniversary right this is a big property i think but maybe they don't think so uh, i'm sure they do but maybe they just don't see the the need to celebrate it as much as we do i mean 35 isn't like an incredible anniversary point it's, true but I just it's long feel like, like made... it's not like 50 or 25 which are right but they made bigger. such a big deal out of mario's thing so <laughs> it's true and then COVID hit so yeah exactly yeah um at some yeah. point somewhere sometime this summer blue points fucking remaster that they're working on it's got to be revealed somewhere yeah I'm not related to nintendo here but it's got to be somewhere i assume yeah uh does Elden Ring show up in here? Oh my god, Elden Ring. There, yeah, is no, there is no Bandai Namco event happening, but I'm like, I will go here and saying, if we do not see anything on Elden Ring, this E3, at this point, I think it's dead. I yeah, just think it's, it's not happening. Long, right? I just don't think it's happening anymore. Um, And maybe they just announced it way the fuck too early. <laughs> way too early. Yeah, that totally makes sense to me. Um. Because who knows? Is Martin even doing anything on it? I don't know. Yeah, right. No. It, oh, I'm looking at the Wikipedia. Elden Ring began development in 2017. Well, it's been four years now. I and mean, if I wait for they've George R. Martin to do anything. One little tiny trailer. Yeah. If they're waiting I, for George R. Martin to do anything, then then it'll be we'll be waiting forever. Yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like this is this is the year they need to show it, or I don't have any faith that it's coming out. Um, and it's just a dead project. So, but yeah, that, I mean, that would be something that could be shown during, uh, the IGN thing or the summer games fest thing. Maybe that they'll they'll just shadow drop it. Sure. And it's really what it is, is like a five minute gameplay introduction of some sort. And then it just, it goes into, um, winds of winter and it's just George R. Martin sitting in the throne reading it. Exactly. (laughs) Yep, that's exactly what it's going to be. <laughs> I like to make we like to make predictions that never come true, and that's that's yeah. the the one that will never ever come true. Here's the prediction that will never come true: is the Winds of Winter is coming out. God, that hurts my heart. <laughs> it's not happening. It's that not happening. <laughs> so bad. Just move move along. Right. You've uh, a Dance with Dragons was the end of the end of the book writing uh, well, story. I mean. Can you imagine being Bantam, the the book publishers, and they're like, we can cash in on all the, you know, I'm sure they did with the other books that were published, but they never got to publish a new book during the run of the HBO series. Um, 
God. Wow. <laughs> I can't imagine how pissed they are. Oh, boy. Yeah. I'm sure Martin's like, whatever. I'm sitting on my pile of money <laughs> at this point. I mean, yeah, he's enjoying his life. Sure, he doesn't owe us anything. That's fine. Um, and we've got enough and got enough of an end game with the the show. I'm sure those things that happened are what he said would happen. But boy, they got the way they got to there. Yes, very this, wrong. The execution isn't going to be the same, but I think the exactly. end point is going to be roughly the same. Um, yep, I agree. It like it or sense. not, <laughs> but that's unless he's like, oh shit, people hated that. Let's <laughs> do. I need. I to think <laughs> Dan fucking change my down. ending. Danny burning down King's Landing makes total sense if Tyrion is the one telling her to fucking do it. But if she's going crazy on her, like, that doesn't make any sense at all. But if Tyrion's, yeah. like, using her as a tool to just burn the whole fucking place down, that makes absolute sense. Yep. There's a lot that could make a lot of sense if they had just tweaked a few things here and there. But yeah. no, they did not. Um, I remember the the um, reports from the show, like, um, Nikolai uh, Ko, I forget his name, Kojal yeah. Walster or something like that, the one who played uh, Jamie when they were doing the final season and he's going through the reading and doing the scenes, he's like, this doesn't make any sense for the character. You need to do this instead. And they were like, Nope, those are the lines. <laughs> he's just like, no, have you read the books? This doesn't make sense. Yeah. I've been uh, playing this character for years. This makes no sense for the character. Exactly. So yeah. welcome to our game of Thrones podcast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. So that's our E3 predictions. Um, yeah. I'll be stoked if we get one thing, right? Yeah. I'm not Especially expecting much Kendall. of anything. I'm keeping my expectations really low for this. Um, yeah. Because I do think this thing. is truly where we're going to see the fallout of COVID affecting mm -hmm. game development is this E3. And people just not having a lot to show overall. Yep. I can see that for sure. Like, we're, we're just... Game development got delayed like a year. And it just takes a while before that shows publicly. Um, so... Yeah, we'll see, and there'll be later through the summer. There'll be more summer game fest. We have EA Play in July. There'll be a probably a uh, state of another state of play or two over the summer as well. Yep. But nope, not keeping, not letting my hopes get up for this. So uh, no, nope. especially not Nintendo. I'm gonna have yeah. my heart broken, and that's the yes. only one I care about. <laughs> so, <sighs> um, what have you been playing this week? Um. Not nearly as much as I wanted to, but I did play some Mass Effect 3. I'm nice. into Mass Effect 3. Uh, farther, I've played a few priority missions. I am still constantly annoyed about the amount of side stuff they keep throwing at you while constantly telling you, like, everything is terrible, you need to save, like, save Earth. And you're like, well, then why are you asking me to do all these other things? Constantly. Right. Leave me alone. Uh, yeah, it's just a weird, it's a very... Um, very back and forth on the tone that they want there. And I just, it's just not executed that well from that standpoint. Um, character writing is still great. Um, I've recruited most characters at this point. Um, I can't remember how many play main playable. I think I have one more on my roster to get. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I've, I've met up with a lot of this, the other side characters. I've met Thane, met Miranda again. I've met um, Rex and Grunt and Morden. And the great thing with that, this game series is just since you've spent so much time with these characters, even though they're not on your team, you're just like, oh, I get to see these characters again. It's great. It feels good. Yeah. Um, and they're written really well. And you can kind of see how their character arcs have been flowing between between games and where they're at. So there's, a, there's at least a consistency to the characters that I appreciate overall. Um, and that's been really nice. Uh, gameplay wise, three is still way snappier than even two. Um, biotics are just stupid in this game. Um, just huge biotic explosions, just ripping through combat. I'm playing on normal, and I'm like, oh, I thought this was a challenge at one point. It's not even a challenge. Oh, well. I'm just wrecking everything. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. The re the the legendary edition is great. Um. It is so good. <laughs> I've got a list saying when you should play the DLC for three, um, which I realize I haven't actually played the DLC through three. So, oh really? You never did? No, because I beat it and I was like, I'm not playing that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's cool. You put out DLC for it. No, well, I played one DLC, which was the Javik, the the Prothean 
um, crew member. Mm-hmm. I did that because that was out when it originally released. But there's a few other pieces that just weren't. And I was like, I beat the game. And I'm like, I'm not playing this again to play those other things. And I don't really want to go back to it after this ending. Um, I'm far enough away from that feeling now where I can play it again. But uh, so I'll get to experience some of this DLC again. But yeah, it's pretty nice it, to be able to go through uh, one of the best trilogies ever and still experience new stuff. It's yeah, fun. and I totally am. They're just different things. I, there is a part, the next time I play through, I'm going to play Absolute Asshole Renegade Shepard. Because <laughs> I want to see that how that plays out. Because you've never done that, right? I've never done it like full on. Like yeah. I've had a hard time, but I'm really curious on how some of it can play out. Um, yeah, it's hard for me to be an asshole in games because I don't. That's not really. Yeah. How I flow in real life. But yeah, um, did I play anything? I think that's. I've just played some of that. I played a little bit more Monster Hunter. Um, I've kind of tapped out on all the content so far. Like I made it to Hunter, Hunter rank one hundred, and fought the the. Not the final boss, but there was another high-end monster introduced at Hunter Rank 100, and I fought and beat that one. So now it just unlocked, like, extra challenging quests. There's no new monsters for me to hunt. It's just remixes of different monsters on different maps and uh, different things. So I think I'm pretty good there. And yeah, that's all I've really been doing. And now just getting ready for my vacation and figuring out what game I'm going to get before I leave. So I have to figure out what I'm downloading on Friday. Right. The one game you're going to play on your trip. One game I'm going to play on my trip. Yeah. Um, and I have it. It's going to be an RPG of some sort. And I've got it down to Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne. Dragon Quest 11. Um, Bravely Default 2. Or Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Did the first one you mentioned. Um, Shin, uh, Shin Megami Tensei three come out already the remake yeah it's out came out a few weeks ago oh shit i completely missed that um i don't know those are four games that i all want to i want to play it's just which one do i want to do on this trip right you and you own all of them no oh i don't i don't own any of them i'm only gonna buy it whenever i'm gonna play it yep that's a hard choice there's two on there that i would choose but which two for you um I, number one would be dragon quest but only because i've uh what six seven hours i put into that yeah. and it's, it's really fucking good um and this you know yeah if you're looking for that kind of grindy rpg um the story is all right so far but i'd, I'd probably do tokyo mirage sessions to be honest yeah uh i don't know we'll find out i'm just gonna i'm gonna let myself sit on it this entire week friday makes the decision because saturday morning i go to the airport um so we'll find out yeah, I'm looking forward to, to hearing what you choose. Yeah. Um, I guess, I don't know, considering, are you trying to like start it and beat it on your trip? Because no. Dragon Quest Eleven might be a bad choice. <laughs> no, I don't think any of these I'll beat on the trip. It's just mm-hmm. like playing Fire Emblem Three Houses. I'm going to play this game without internet for the most part. So yeah. it's me right. just playing the game without being able to look up anything mm-hmm. and just play the game. Right. However it presents itself to me. So, yep, I have to think on it a lot. That's going to be cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess this is your last podcast, right? It you're is. here next week? Yeah, because we week. have... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, we have... I will not be recording next week or the week after. 13th yeah, thir- and the 20th. 13th and 20th. We've got Bill coming in. He's very excited. We've got some good good content coming up. Nice. I'm looking forward to having him here. Um, for me this week, uh, you know, I'm every week I'm trying to play something in my backlog. This time I took my DS with me out and about, um, and I played mystery dungeon Sheer and the wanderer, um, which was recommended a long time ago as like a really nice dungeon crawler roguelike, um, game. And that's exactly what it is. It's very, uh, it looks like a, um, I don't know, like a dragon quest or a Final fantasy at the time. That's kind of how it's like presented in terms of art style. But, um, you, you, basically are this wandering samurai um and you're you know in real time attacking monsters on the 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 screen every time you move the enemies are moving so if you stop it and then you can kind of see where enemies are and um approach them but you just hit the a button and you attack them um you find things along the way coins and 
shields and whatever else. So you're picking up equipment as you go, and then you can spend that spend the coin to buy new equipment. And then uh, somewhere in the the map, basically, there's a set of stairs that goes down to the next level of the dungeon. Okay. And you're just exploring, trying to level up. Um, I think I got to level like ten or twelve, and then I died from some random enemy, and then you start over. Huh. You just start over, and that's the roguelike part, right? So yeah. you can store. There's a there's a town, and you can store items in there. So if you do that and then you die, you can come back to that town and pick up those items, and then that somewhat progression moving forward. Um, but yeah, I died and everything was lost, and I started over again. I was like, okay, I get this. I didn't really realize it was a roguelike until that happened. Um, but for some reason, this is a game that originally came out uh, for the fa- Super Famicom in '95. And was remade for the DS, which is the one I'm playing. I'm playing a DS cart um, in March of 2008. And it's super interesting. It has some really interesting concepts. The idea of the roguelike in a weird-ass RPG like this. Um, that just looks like, I don't know, Secret of Mana sprites or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, the music is cool. The soundtrack is really good. Um, and the writing is really snappy. Um, it kind of starts with like, like who there's like a talking weasel. That's one of your, like your companion. And it kind of starts in with an info dump. And then okay. that weasel, the, that character's like, no, no, we're not going to get into all that. Like, I just, I'm your companion. Let's go. <laughs> and it's like, oh, that's cool. Kind of like a little nod to, we're not going to info dump. We're just going to move on. Um, I don't know if I'll play it. I just, you know, okay. I've, I have it. I want to check it out. Uh, I don't know if I want to spend time kind of grinding. Um, but I do like that, um, that loop a little bit of the um, starting over and getting smarter about the systems of the game and how they interact. Interesting. Um, a I'm little bit, at, a little, sorry, go ahead. I was looking at um, Wikipedia on this. It's part of the mystery dungeon line of games, which is funny because that's sure in the wanderer, the one you're playing. Yep. Mm-hmm. is like one of the first ones, not the first, but very close to the first. But there's a Pokemon one too, isn't there? There's plenty of there's tons of Pokemon ones. Like there's Pokemon Mystery Dungeon is a whole line of Pokemon games. Um there's Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon, which came out I th- um Oh shit. Yeah, twenty nineteen. Which yeah. Um there's Myst- Pokemon Mystery Dungeon DX. I remember that coming out on the Switch. Uh there's a new uh Shirin the Wanderer as well that came out on in 2020, DS. which... Yeah, well, it was a DS title in 2010. Came out in the Vita. Right. On both Japan and North America. And is also now on PC. I don't know where you buy it, but... That's yeah, crazy. It, this is a long-running, like, franchise of games. It's a game that, as I was playing it... Like, it's it's an old game, but it, it feels fresh. It feels like a game that you might like. Um, okay. So I don't know if I, I might send it up to you for you to check out, but it, it definitely... Um... Oh, yeah, here it is on Steam. Oh, it's on Steam. Sharon the Wanderer, The Tower of Fortune and the Dice of Fate. Steam. Oh, that's the, new, that's the newer one. The newest one, yeah. one. yeah. Whoa. Yeah, there it is. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Sharon the Wanderer. Yeah, so I'm glad I tried it. Um, I don't know if it's a game for me, but I can see that it's a good game. Like it, okay. it does what it's trying to do well, and the, the writing and the music is really good. Um, so I'm glad I checked it out. I probably won't um, continue on with it, but I can see why people like it. Um, other than that, man, I um, I've been playing Overwatch on PS5. Um, nice. I sit down to like you know play Mass Effect, and I see my friends playing Overwatch, and he sends me an invite, and I just play, and it's just made me realize. Um, it's just an excuse to talk like this week has been okay. kind of nuts with the whole family stuff. So yeah, just kind of unpacking that. And it's been really nice to, to talk about it. Um, but I haven't, I thought I'd be playing mass effect this week and I haven't, although when I hang up with this podcast, I will be <laughs> <laughs> uh, getting back to mass effect. Um, nice. That's about it. My, I, with my daughter, we played Mario Odyssey this morning. Um, and then we played some, Oh, we started breath of the wild. Okay. Um, like real for real. So we beat two shrines on the plateau and she was super into the, um, the magnet, the magnets and the bombs. So she was practicing okay. throwing bombs at walls and blowing things up, just hitting the left bumper, right bumper, left bumper. 
Um, and she was aiming Link and blowing walls up. And I was like, oh, my God, it's happening. She's becoming a gamer. <laughs> in there you some go. Way. Um, yeah, it's cool. Oh, one other thing about Sharon the Wanderer that I thought was a cool mechanic. Um, after you get hit and, you know, your, your HP is down, you can either hold A and B to revive your um, HP, but then it brings enemies to you, basically, like um, that just get um, attracted to you. Or you just walk. And when you walk around the map, your HP goes up one point at a time. Okay. And it's kind of kind of a cool way to, because when you move, you're bringing enemies around. So you're kind of advancing time. Yeah, so no, it's like a risk actually, reward. when you're talking about that, that whole mechanic, that's mm -hmm. net hack. Net hack, huh? Net hack is like the father of roguelikes. Um, it's still made. It's you play it in the terminal. I've played a lot of it in my day. Uh, you were the at symbol on the screen, and it's uh, oh dun yeah, dungeon okay. crawling. It's based on advanced Dungeons and Dragons rules back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, it's been in the round since the '80s, and that's that's how it works. When you move, that's when time advances like that's when a turn yep. happens and things can move and you gain you gain that's how you restore hit points is time passing um so yes actually what you're talking about like sounds really intriguing to me because i'm curious how they they effectively have trimmed down net hack to be uh more approachable i would say because <laughs> net hack is not an approachable game i love yeah. it but it's not approachable at right in any way shape or form so I am very intrigued by this game now. Yeah, I might um you I might send you my cart cuz I I don't think I'll probably check it out again. Okay. Um but my Steam library says someone's playing Path of Exile. Is it you? No. Oh no, it's not you. It's someone else on my friends list. What the fuck? <laughs> I do not. Uh, when I play Path of Exile, I don't play it through Steam. Oh, okay. Interesting. That that was surprising. Anyways, um yeah, so that's what I, what I've been playing. Um, and then I forgot there's one more prediction under my other for E3 <laughs> that is not going to happen, but I want it to happen. I want a critical role video game. <laughs> not anytime soon. I don't think. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibility. And at some point though, um, yeah. did, yeah, did I, they I, announce it, there's a, um, uh, season three or campaign three? Uh, I mean, there's going to be another one. They haven't okay. announced specifically that campaign three that just, as I'm watching the finale and stuff, they're, they've they were referencing uh, like as they're finishing that last episode of Campaign Two of being like, okay, let's take it from the top. Um, so they're planning on it uh, this Thursday. They're having a state of the role, um, mm. and they're going to talk about what what to expect in the next bit. And they have some project that they've been working on that they're going to announce there which I don't think is a video game. It's a stream, something they're streaming, but I wouldn't be surprised if someone else takes on the DM role and runs something for like six months. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. um, like a longer form, not just a one shot, but just a longer, like shorter campaign where Matt gets to play in the game, but he's also can start working on campaign three and what that will be. Right. That makes sense. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm sure one of them would love to do to do a, a shorter campaign, and I'm sure Matt would love to just play a character at some point. Yeah. Um. So yes. Uh, but you no, know, I I think a video game set in that world wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility in the future. Like, and that's not me being coy and knowing anything. It's just basically being like, it's a popular property. They're popular voice actors. Why wouldn't someone poke them to do this? <laughs> exactly. Right. There's there's money to be made there and also fun to be had, I think, for the, yes. the team. So um, I think the biggest thing would be critical role would be them as a company would be very picky about what that game would. Be. And oh, so yeah. like they're not just going to like license it out to someone for the hell of it to make money. It's like, no, if they're going to license it, it has to meet their quality bar that they want. So, right. Um that might be the only thing that holds it back from ever happening is that the people approaching them wanting to make this thing may not be people that they respect enough to. Right. Yeah. They probably have gotten pitches and they're like, I don't know who you no. are now. Thanks. I mean, the closest we got is we have them doing their Vox Machina voices for, uh, and pillars, right? Pillars of eternity Two, dead fire. You can, right. you can have all those characters. So, Maybe that's, that's something Obsidian, like Obsidian wants Obsidian. to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe Obsidian wants right. to do it. But now they're owned by Microsoft, so maybe not. I don't know. 
yeah I think changes I mean, might change that whole equation so yep. i don't know but i like that prediction i want something like that but i don't think we'll see anything like that for a while if it, if ever it would be nice but yeah dreams pie in the sky yeah well, that was our E3 prediction episode. Um, thanks for listening. If you like us, please rate us on your podcast service of choice. Tell a couple friends. And uh, next week we'll be back. Well, I'll be back. It'll be me and Bill um, discussing some cool stuff. Uh, Anthony, enjoy your vacation, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank and you. Everyone else, enjoy your games. All right. Later, everyone.